What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be going through a ton of new arrivals at DLT Trading. Uh, they have been pumping stuff out here. Oh my gosh, so much cool stuff. Uh, there will be links for all of this stuff right down in the description. In fact, if you're wondering why would we need to sit here and watch you do a video, I could just go look at this stuff myself. Absolutely, I will link this exact page right down under this video so that you can conveniently go and look through this stuff yourself if you don't wanna hear my commentary on it. There's about 10 pages of stuff here, a lot of stuff that I wanna talk about, and I'll also let you guys know I'm recording this on a Thursday so that by the time you guys, well, by the time you see it, which is Saturday morning, um, there will probably be more stuff because it seems like every day or every other day, DLT launches a whole bunch of new stuff, right? So take a look at it, absolutely. Thanks to my generous patrons for supporting me right now. There's a link for Patreon down below. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. Let's get started here. I don't really care about the buck onset. I'm sorry. Maybe it's great. Whoever got this, you beat me by one second. I was in the gym and I, that, I reloaded the page and it populated. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm finally going to get a Sith Lord Ultra Tech. The only thing that hung me up was clicking on the little box that says it's legal to ship to where I live, right? You have to do that with automatic knives. I missed it. So when I click buy, when I clicked buy, it was like, no, you have to agree to this. And then when I went to agree, it was like, no, it sold out. And I was like, no. So whoever got that, congratulations. God dang it. Anyways, moving on here, we have some more heretic rates. Uh, this is actually a good knife. I was really happy with it. I wasn't happy with the particular carbon fiber that came on mine, but it was overall great quality. They have lots of different types of carbon fiber. This is different than the marble or shred carbon fiber that I had. We have the jade bolsters with some, it looks like frag textured. Uh, I'm not big into the two-tone one. I'll click on this one. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, DLT trading is big on American stuff and they tend to be a little more expensive, but you are buying a higher quality item. So we've got LMAX, the Jade Bolster, the Frag Firing Button, and the Frag Textured. What it says is carbon fiber. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, I'll let you guys take a look at that if you want to. Uh, there's the two-tone one, another one here with a more aggressive tanto, it looks like. There are still... XM18 three and a half inch textured titanium scales with the DLT trading exclusive Warthog theme available. I'm shocked that those are not sold out yet. Get those while you can. The Warthog theme is super duper cool. I think Slicey Dicey has one on one of his XMs. Um, but yeah, they still have Battle Blue and Gold, Battle Bronze and uh, Raw Tie, and then the Battle Blue and Raw Tie. Um, the machining is really, really good on these, and they are 100% factory hinderer scales. These are the real deal, so they will fit just as well as everything else. The new Rockstead, well, is it new? Psy T ZDP? There you go. If you want to spend two grand on a knife, right? Then the Ren ZDP. I own a Rockstead. They're great. They're a lot of money. Higo 2 and DLC tie. This is the same thing that I own, except it's a titanium frame lock ex instead of a liner lock, right? So there you go, 250 less than the Higo 2 liner. There's uh, the standard Higo, probably the least expensive Higo with the frame lock for 900. Uh, so there you go. The shoe, which is a button lock, believe it or not, a button lock titanium Rockstead. So for those of you wanting to spend that much money, I know less than 1% of my audience, but I'm pointing it out. There's always people in there. Somebody snagged the uh, very sought after desert ironwood ironwood handle, uh, Higo 1, right? Uh, moving on here, there's some more things. Um, RGT, Timascus, uh, Reeve Clips. Interesting, uh, William Henry Lancet Nightline, titanium and carbon fiber, ZDP 189 core blade. So is it a San Mai? Let's take a look. I don't see a lot of William Henry's, right? Is this a button lock? Yeah, features a light and resilient bolster in aerospace grade titanium and scale and carbon fiber. The blade is stainless three layer. So I guess, yes, and my, uh, with an extra strong core of ZDP 189. That's really cool. Um, one handed button lock. That is pretty sick. Um, William Henry is a legendary, 
legendary knife maker. Um, so I'm kind of surprised I'm looking at a $550 William Henry. I'm used to seeing multi-thousand dollar William Henrys. I would imagine there are more production elements in this versus some of his fully handmade customs, but still, Sanmai ZDP and a button lock on a nice little uh, thumb stud deployer, a little gentleman's, uh, as much as I hate that. Uh, these are numbered, by the way. As much as I hate the term gentleman's knife, right? Oh, look at that button. That is sick. That's really nice. That orange and black carbon fiber. Man, that's cool. Um, it looks like there's one. <laughs> Is there just one left? No, there's a couple. There's some some uh, some some uh, heavier hitters here. Yeah, so if you want to spend some more money, but as far as the $550 variants, uh, one, maybe that'll be gone by the time I do the video. But okay, there's, an eight, there, there's some $800 right if you want to go uh, a little more, a little 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 more expensive right okay there you go uh clip case <laughs> okay um there you go uh the heretic manticore x dual edge oh my gosh this is a fantastic otf it's also the same size as the combat troodon for uh what is this 100 no almost 200 dollars less Made in the USA, same materials except for the blade. It's LMAX instead of 204P, which is fine. 9.2 inches. Guys, this is a heck of a deal. I, I can't believe somebody hasn't bought this yet. I've got one here. Uh, it's amazing. It <laughs> yeah, uh, I would say grab it before the prices go up on those things. I mean, again, it's like, don't, don't let me... I'm not trying to pressure you guys into spending $300 on a knife or whatever, right? But for those people who were going to do it anyway and you're just wanting to know what's out there, yeah, that Manticore X is awesome. Olight Warrior, I think they've got some new additions, Olight uh, Warrior Mini 2. That's one of my favorite flashlights right now is the Warrior Mini 2. Not a crazy high lumen, I mean, it's like at 1,500 lumens, but I mean, honestly, that's way more than I'll ever need. Most of the time, the light output that I need is about three to 400 lumens max. So while I do have flashlights, I own flashlights that are capable of six or 7,000 lumens, that's massive overkill for me. The Olight uh, Warrior Mini 2 is awesome. You can get it in aluminum for cheaper, but these titanium or special edition ones, $139, right? Check those out if you want. Um, they have a ton of fixed blades. I know that uh, people who are big into fixed blades or and or bushcraft are um, big fans of DLT. I'm not a fixed blade person, so I cannot properly commentate on a lot of these. You can check out what they've got if you want. Lots of soloists, a whole bunch. These are huge. If you guys remember, two, three years ago, I reviewed the soloists. These are large folders for sure. Plenty of Rainmakers. That is officially my favorite uh, model from Olamic Cutlery. The weight of the blade makes this thing flip really well, and I think the action is a little better on these guys than some of Olamic's other models. They are expensive, but there are major custom elements in these things, and they are premium US products. Awesome, uh, JG10 Tanto, two-tone Tanto, two-tone Tanto, Ultra Tech. Um, that's pretty cool. They've got some bronze and apocalypse, I guess they have like the apocalyptic bronze with the tan, right? If you want your knife to look like it's been buried in sand and mud for 200 years, so there you go. They always have tons of Ultra Tech. Somebody snagged an awesome one right there. I think that's copper, yeah, pretty cool. Um, they've got some new, uh, ultra techs. These kind of look like stormtrooper. I don't think they're officially stormtrooper. Uh, I'm sorry, exosets. Um, but they do look cool if you're, you know, into a dog tag sized OTF. Uh, some more bronze variants. I have people always, always, they, they have more than the serrated versions, but it doesn't surprise me that some of the serrated bronze variants are still available. Lots of 247s. They always have 247s. Probably their most popular model. I have been infinitely intrigued by these Mech Force Mech Torch lights, mainly because of how they look. Um, this one right here is particularly cool. Um, 260, right? There's a lot of uh, cool machining in here, and these slots are tritium slots, right? I've done that before, just a little bit of glass glue and some tritium, and you can add whatever color you want. Um, the max output is about 1300 lumens, right? So people, I know a lot of flashlight people will say, you know, X amount of money for so many lumens. There are definitely 
$250 flashlights out there. I've got one right here. Like I said before, I've got a flashlight that's about two to 250 that'll put out way more in terms of power. But I've learned that it's not really all about that. You know, I mean, it's neat, it's impressive, right? But it's kind of like when you emphasize, you know, the steel and the potential edge retention, and that's how you measure the value of a knife, right? There's a lot of other elements when it comes to a knife. I don't know anything really about these lights, uh, how much people like them or they don't, right? Whatever. Um, but uh, there's all the specs and everything for those uh, those of you who are flashlight people, right? Um, looks like it uses an 18350 rechargeable. So I just like how they look. And I like that they're like a bajillion different shades of titanium, these Gen 2s, blue, light blue. They've got green, they've got raw, stonewashed, etc hatchets neat i've honestly been tempted many times to buy a hatchet from dlt not yet though uh more rates there you go there's still an xm 18 three and a half inch skinny titanium scale in working finish uh or battle blue it's basically anodized working finish um eclipse hardware okay there's the uh the standard version the olight when uh <laughs> olight warrior mini 2 for 89.95 uh, excellent it's got a magnetic tail cap as well, and it has that magnetic charging thing button uh, on the side and on the back, and it's got the attitude adjuster. Is it a strike bezel? I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the main flashlight guy. The Spider Code Tough, uh, the DLT Trading Spider Code Tough is still available. This is a tank of a spot. This has got to be. I know. Yeah, you should sign up for uh, product alerts through DLT trading when it reminds you to do that because they drop so many cool things. This is a tank of a Spyderco, guys. Um, thick blade stock, thick titanium, and it does have, even though it doesn't look like it, it does have a lock bar insert. Can you see that little sliver there? On the one that I've got here, I was surprised to see that it has a lock bar insert and over travel stop. You can actually see the over travel uh, between the, uh, in the gap there, between the frame and the, the lock. Um, $315 knife, and it is certainly one of the weirdest looking Spydercos I've ever seen, but it is purposefully built. It's very comfortable, um, and it's very smooth. It's running on phosphor bronze, so that is, you know, of course, with a combination of crew wear, we definitely have an expensive but very capable uh, Spyderco knife that's a frame lock, so that's kind of neat. Oh, surprise. The A lot of 31s are sold out. I believe uh, S45 VN 31s are pretty plentiful right now. These are really intriguing. The Maverick, intriguing? What is intriguing? Intriguing. The Maverick Customs Tiny Frag Titanium Pry Bar. Um, so like the age of the EDC multi-tool thing is, I'm not going to say over. It's just kind of like, it's part of it still hanging on. I've seen so many EDC pry bars and none of them have intrigued me as much as this guy. And it's because of the, and there's a lot of different sizes too. It's because of the mounting position of the pocket clip uh, and the fact that it is a pry bar slash bottle opener. That's all I've ever wanted in something like this, right? The teeny tiny one, I don't know. It doesn't look like any of the tiny ones are still available, but the larger ones, and there's some medium size and some smaller medium size ones. Um, these actually look pretty cool. Titanium frag with or without the bottle opener. Um, I would definitely, me personally, I would get one with a bottle opener, right? Um, there's some crazier stuff, right? There's a whole bunch of these. These are cool. Um, and then I prob personally, I probably wouldn't go. So they have, there's 5.5. They have five inch versions. Um, and then they have the one that I would probably go for is, is it on the next page? Kansas internet. Hang on guys. Still five inches here. Uh, <laughs> what's the deal? Golly, there we go. God, four inch. The four inch version is probably what I would go for. Uh, darn it. The one that I would go right there is pretty cool. Um, there's a good one, right? Um, but yeah, these four inch versions look pretty awesome. Um, I think that might be fairly easy to carry. If you're somebody who likes to carry stuff like this, that one right there is super cool. 95 bucks. I don't think that's terrible, right? Microtech Hera stonewashed. I have one. These fire surprisingly hard, definitely harder than the UTX 85 and Troodon that they are, um, they're, they're similar in size. It's more similar in size to the Troodon. Big old ball bearing uh, clip on this guy. There's a little more going on with this than the Troodon. I think 426 is 
a bit high. I have not reviewed this yet. You guys will see the unboxing, I don't know, somewhat soon. This is the picture I want. There we go. So there's the pocket clip, right? Curiously, it's still using the proprietary tri-wing screws. Eh. Blade is cool though, double fuller. I believe these are, well, it doesn't say the blade material, probably because it varies between M390 and 204P. But those were smoother and harder firing than I expected them uh, to be. So 426, it's a bit high. Uh, but then again, you know, Microtechs tend to be a bit high. Um, so you can make that choice for yourself. Wow, that combat troad on Bowie is still there. The carbon fiber and Damascus one. Very expensive. I believe that's a signature series, so it has all the extra spiciness, right? I'm sure somebody will pick that up eventually. And in my opinion, the coolest one on the website. Very expensive. But hey, we've talked about Rocksteads already. Why not talk about a $1,200 Microtech? Look at this. This is crazy. Man, that is super cool. So we have the carbon fiber on one side, and then is this like razor wire? Oh my gosh, that blade is gorgeous. Oh, what do we have here? Uh, nothing, it's not going to tell us what kind. I don't know if that's Vegas Forge or what that is, but it's premium, real deal Damascus. That is a super, no I'm, I'm shocked that that's still there. Um, I guarantee they've, well, I can't, I don't know because I don't work for DLT trading, but I would guess they only have one of those. Some new Medfords. Um, these are not the ones that I wanted to bring to your guys' attention. Uh, there's a ton of, so many fixed blades. Companies I've never even heard of. Lots of American stuff. The Winkler knives I've definitely heard of. I know that these are popular. Um, in fact, I th think I've shown one on the channel. I can't remember. 2,000 uploads. It's really hard to remember everything that I have shown on this channel. The Bravo ones, of course, those are like all, all but totally gone. I think there's a couple of Bravo ones in 3V still lingering if I find it all pointed out. Um, but uh, yeah, Bravo 1.25 LT in S45VN, there's one of those still there. Uh, smoke Jumper, I don't know who makes the Smoke Jumper. Is it is it Bark River? Uh, I guess it, yeah, I think these are all Bark Rivers. I know. People are probably telling me, like, how are you not familiar with Bark River? I've only ever handled one, and it was the big, like, almost machete-sized um, uh, Bravo 2. It was the Bravo Alpha in 3V in some Sure Touch, Blue Black Sure Touch. I don't know what that, I don't know what that is. More Alphas and some other materials. Um, so there, I'm sorry, fixed blade people are like, slow down. You can go look at this. Uh, like I said, link to all this stuff in the description. I want to get down to, there was something that I thought was really neat. And I can't remember if I talked about this the last time. Somebody got, a, somebody picked up a while back, somebody picked up a Malibu from DLT. So congratulations. The Godfather in rose gold. I still think those are super cool. That is a way, way cooler and way bigger knife than I ever knew until I recently, well, somewhat recently reviewed it. Um, so yeah, if you like that kind of old school stiletto, you know, looking switchblade, then yeah, then you, you might enjoy that. There's the regular Manticores. These are much smaller. But if you like a smaller OTF, 280 bucks. This is a little bit more robust than, I think, like wider than the UTX-85. It's somewhere around that size. I haven't actually handled it. Lots of XM24 micarta. I'm sorry, it says canvas micarta. Scales smooth, uh, textured, writes, whole bunch of stuff. Three and a half inch micarta scales. Uh, I think that uh, this, there's some skinny micarta scales. I think that would look really good. Lots of wild Smiths. Uh, Smiths. I'm, I talk good today. Talk good, I do. Yes. Uh, lots of interesting Swiss Army Classic SDs, right? Um, are we getting close to the men first? The Gentleman Jack is kind of, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. Um, I think the most... I have not been super duper interested with anything Medford has been doing here lately, except for one thing, and I'll point it out. The McNeese PM Mach 2, there's a couple of those still available. Are we into the, yeah. So both on, uh, I'll show you this one. 
Medford's new finish on some of his DLC and stonewashed variants is now hyper reflective. Um, I think this looks way better than their old. This is like on my dark horse, the reflective tumbled DLC that I've got. That's pretty much what you're looking at um, on, on these guys. And the same thing carries over to... See if I can find one. Um, maybe maybe one of these will have a similar. Their new tumbled finish is also much more reflective, but I don't know that it's going to um, actually show up on camera here. That DLC really showed it off. I don't think that one's actually got it. I wonder if I can um, go and find it here because I, I think we're pretty much giving. I'm sorry, we're pretty much getting into stuff that I have seen or stuff that's older. It's been on the site for a while. Those heretic Nephilims are awesome. They're expensive, but oh my gosh, that's a good looking big blade. Uh, yeah, I think so. So hang on. Let's see if we can get to uh, P-R-A-E-T-O-R-I-A-N. Is that how you spell Praetorian? Um, let's see if I can find a tumbled uh, uh, Praetorian um, that has that new hyper-reflective finish. See, here's the older, like the standard PVD. It's just flat, much less reflective. There's the um, satin, um, but the new tumbled ones, I remember catching it even in the pictures. I remember going, oh my gosh, that is way different. I wonder if they sold out of all of them. Um, eh, no, that's not one of them. Anyways, um, some of the newer finishes on the Medford Praetorians. Yeah, it looks like most of the other ones are sold out. But like that blue one that I showed you um, a while, uh, just, just a, a little bit ago, that definitely is a different finish than anything I've ever seen from Medford Knives. So um, absolutely, if you're a fan of that model, uh, check those out. Guys, I think that's going to be pretty much it today. This is fun. I love going through new arrivals. I would do it every single week, but it's just... Like there's not enough new stuff to do that. So I kind of spread these out, do different retailers here and there. Um, but DLT has a ton of stuff. And remember, DLT regularly gets hinderers. Um, I'm not going to say regularly, but they do get uh, the Demco 8020 and even they, they will be getting more Demco 8020.5s. They obviously get weird stuff like the Sith Lord Ultratech. Again, congratulations to the person who got that. You jerk. Um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just really wanted that. Uh, lots and lots of the stuff that um, we like to see, definitely. Regular Chris Reeves, right? Whole bunch of stuff. So make sure you check them out. Sign up for email notifications. It's absolutely worth it. Use my link down in the description. I have always enjoyed shopping with DLT Trading. They ship quickly. Uh, quality site, quality people, quality products. Very, very good. Guys, that's going to be pretty much it today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.